Hello my soccer universe. Well, the craziest Nations League uh, group stage since its inception, or so the third time, is in the books. And yes, we had quite some surprises and even on the last match day it uh, did not let up. We have a final four that probably was not entirely expected the way it turned out to be. But on the other side, you know, I think there are some, um, there are at least three teams there that have already been in a final four as well. It has also a little bit been a redemption for Italy and also I think for Spain who had uh, kind of a bad uh, result before. Now they're back in the um, final uh in the final four winning their group so you know uh with spain anyway you you remember last year the uh, euro qualif uh yeah no world cup qual qualifying was an up and down suddenly sweden had the up and then uh spain roared back and was a little bit like that on a smaller scale um i have to say i find especially when we look at the lower leagues uh when we look who is coming up now into league a i mean on one side scotland has come coming up being the best british team uh therefore that i find very int interesting but i have to say that some of the promoted teams are not of the quality of the um relegated teams which will make it very int could make it very interesting but i also think it has the potential to make it a little bit too much one-sided I still maintain, although the format with the four groups is a very even one and gives a lot of a plenty of space for teams to play each other, I still like the first installment best where we had loads of teams in League D and C. For that, I think, was almost a little bit more exciting than it is at the moment. But hey, so be it. We have have it as, as it is. I'm wearing Bulgaria, who had a very good international break for once, winning two games in, in a row. So that's rather exciting as well. And I would say let's uh, jump into reviewing the games. And we're going to start in Group A1. And I'm not going to go through the exact running order here as it is, uh, because I want to start in Copenhagen, where uh, Denmark played France uh, again very much a makeshift France squad in many ways because they have the injuries and then I think the Deschamps uh, tactics didn't necessarily help either but it has to also be said that for a good 20-25 minutes France had the upper hand and had really good chances to score I mean and then Scoff Olsen I think almost pro uh, uh, produced an own goal uh, to top that off and at that moment I really thought that France um, were about to win and again uh, for Austria to survive in League A, they needed that Denmark get something off of France. And the other way around, if Denmark needed to beat France uh, in order to um, have a, and hope that Austria wins, that they can make it in, in, in the final four. So those fates were very much intertwined. However, I think it all changed with a brilliant pass by uh, Eriksen, where then the chance was uh, scuffed. But uh, in the build up, then uh, a little bit later on, I, I think it was a brilliant uh, attacking play that Verdamstgaard plays it into Dolberg who just deflect, uh, deflects the ball into the net of France and at that moment probably a bit against the run of play but then Denmark backed it up, they pressed higher, they got a lot of en energy there and France had really trouble coping with it and it was then only um, logically just a few meters, um, uh, minutes later Skov Olsen makes it 2-0, big lead and actually um, in a way, setting it up for Austria to actually scoop in uh, and 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 grab that because at at the time that game was still tied. Now uh, in the second half, France a little bit acquitted themselves by creating a few chances, but it was not a good performance and they were really teetering on the edge. But thanks to Croatia, France are still a League A team. And uh, there was a time where it was really, 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 really tight. I mean, Croatia started out better. They scored a very early goal uh, through Luka Modric in the sixth minute, but Austria could almost immediately equalize uh, through Baumgartner. Um, and at that point, then uh, the game, you could feel that um, Croatia has maybe a little bit more of, of, of the ball and the high press that Austria does. Uh, uh, you know, typically running system didn't really work all that well at that point. However, Croatia is also not a team like France that goes with high speed over that, so uh, Austria was also not uncomfortable. And then the complexion of the game changed a little bit because uh, when Brozovic had to come off 
It's not necessarily that Brozovic came, came up, but then suddenly uh, Rang used it to tell uh, Baumgartner and um, Gregorich to, you know, fall a little, a little bit back that the spaces are shorter. And then Austria really took control of that game. And up until the halftime, they had three golden chances to score a go-ahead head goal. And those chances are the ones that uh, are very unanimously root for uh, for the by everyone, uh, be it fans, be it pundits, be it the players and the coach them, them, them themselves. Austria definitely should have taken the lead before the half. They were then the absolute better team. However, after the half, Croatia again made some adjustments, got the game a little bit more under control. And that actually then um, gave Rangnick the idea, you know, maybe let's bring some fresh blood and let's change the system, let's mirror Croatia. Um, Immediately they got a header through Greg, Greg, uh, Gregorich, but uh, somehow the entire um, change played then into Croatia's card, so then immediately scored two goals and settled the game there. And so, and Rangnick then, as much uh, admitted that this change did not work, he just tried to, uh, you know, get the game unstuck. Yes, it got unstuck. And so Croatia move on to the final four with a win over Austria and Everyone in Aust Austria says that, you know, uh, overall there were four good games, but you got too little out of those and there were two performances where you deservedly lost. This was in Denmark away from home and then against France, the fourth and the fifth game where there was nothing. But other on, on, in, in the other games, if the um, games run a little bit differently, there's a little bit more luck, you take your chances. On, 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 honestly, Austria could have well stayed in this Nations League group. But on the other side, everyone agrees they weren't definitely the fourth best team in there. But, you know, sometimes you need luck as we see with others. Uh, at the same time, we had the big uh, clash between the Netherlands and Belgium. I mean, didn't see all that much. But what I could, could tell is it was a relatively tactically interesting match um, where uh, Belgium actually had more chances. However, the Netherlands developed a new sturdiness and this wily coach, Louis van Gaal, I mean, take the penalty shootout that they lost in 2014 against Argentina out of the equation. They have not lost in reg reg regulations for a long time under van Gaal, which is pretty amazing. And it might be that van Gaal might, might be one of the smartest coaches at the World Cup. So watch out for the, the, for, for, for the Netherlands there. The winner came through Van Dijk, but then very late, late on, uh, Belgium also hit the crossbar with a bicycle kick. So, but uh, it was a good game. But the Netherlands are really impressive in in the group stage, beating Belgium twice, once four one away from home. Again, we cannot really make a big statement about all these games because of the way they they were placed. And this is definitely the weirdest Nations League that we will ever see. Uh, full of surprises. This, this was the 2002 World Cup for the Nations League uh, in, in, in a way. At the same time, we had also Poland securing their spot up top uh, with a 1-0 win in Wales. Widerski getting the goal. And so it is Wales uh, that have actually, the worst, as we see, the worst record in the Nations League, only having uh, one draw. Uh, the big talk on uh, of Monday's games was, of course, the 3-3 between England and Germany. But honestly, the one game that really counted was the one played in Budapest. England, Germany, I even thought that uh, my focus was on Hungary, Italy, which uh, we will, uh, I will tell you was actually quite a really, really good game. And only once it kind of was decided and the other game picked it up, so it worked out well for me. But I felt that the first half was a real, more or less a stalemate. Yes, Germany looking a little bit more uh, cohesive and so on, but not much more than that. And England are uh, just their usual defensive selves, which is not the nature of this English in, in England team. The game got stuck when uh, Maguire, who really, he doesn't have the luck and then he gets a good portion of bad luck on top of that. He gives away a penal penalty that Gundogan expertly pulls, pull, pulls away and then in the 67th you thought that Germany had, had won it with a really nice shot by Kai Havertz assisted by Timo Werner. Yeah, sounds familiar in, 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 in a way. However, just before that, he brought on Bukayo Sako, Mason Mount and suddenly this England team looked fluid going forward. They were unleashed and had the game equalized very, very, very quickly through uh, Luke Shaw, uh, there was a shot that was claimed, uh, um, safe behind the line, the Mason Mount assists by uh, Saka with 7th and 5th, and then Schlotterbeck gives away a penalty, uh, and Harry Kane turns the game on its head, 3-2. 
However, what is an England game without an English goalie mistake? Exactly. Uh, shot by Gnabry cannot be held by, held by Pope and Havertz dusts it off and makes it 3-3. I think this was a 3-3 of the worst, worst kind in a way, but it was entertaining nonetheless. And I also have to say I really liked that England played against Germany in red at Wembley because that's what it should be. It didn't look right the way they played uh, at, uh, at the Euros last year. But as I said, the game that really counted of who is going uh, up in the, in the final four was Hungary, Italy. And it was a really, really exciting game. Big atmosphere with Schala having his uh, final cap for uh, the Hungarians. Very emotional at, 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 at the beginning. But it was for the first at least half an hour, if not uh, a third, a third, a third, five minutes, that Italy, this young Italy team, also you might say second string, but I actually think that this might point Mancini uh, go forward. Maybe we should rely a little bit more on the youngsters. Uh, and less on the old card that just won the Euros for us. So I think this might be also a sign of change. And you know, yes, there are young guys like uh, Tonali uh, from Milan and, and so on coming back. Um, but yeah, they really pressed the life out of Hungary and forced a few mistakes. I mean, there, were, uh, there was an early on, 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 on a mistake by, by the goalie Gulashi, almost went, went in golden. Um, Italy could always end in the end, 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 end. That's exactly how, how the first goal came. They were putting so much pressure. There's a back pass from Notch onto Gulashi was not very well. Then uh, Nyonto and uh, Gulashi clashed the ball for Raspadori, who can pull put in it. It was totally deserved then. And it shook Hong 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 so hard can to do it, but Italy had to learn that actually their best defending is if they do it up the field, not on the, on the back, because there, there, there the Italian back line was really, really vulnerable. And it was just right after the um, ha uh, halftime that Hungary was pressing and they created like, uh, there were four chances in short succession with Donnarumma uh, in, in their uh, few legs in, in there. You really thought that now it's gonna go um, uh, hung, 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 hung his way, but um, it didn't. Cristante plays it to Di Marco and it's 2-0 for Italy. And you thought that silenced the game. No, Hungary kept on pressing for the next 15, 20, 20, 20 minutes. And again, Donnarumma needed to pull out a few great saves, one where he just cleared it off the line. And it was only then in the last 15, 20, 20 minutes when you had the feeling that Hungary is not gonna come back from that one. But I have to say this was a really entertaining game and just at the moment that uh, Italy, I think, that the game calmed down again, then is when England Germany actually picked pick up and they were ton, 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 tons of goals scored, but I think the overall better game was the one in Hungary for sure. Um, yesterday evening, honestly, didn't see much, but Portugal, again, trying to be uh, too cautious against Spain. Yes, they maybe had more chances. Um, but it was more or less a stalemate for most of the time from what I could, could gather. But then um, it was actually Luis Enrique who made the changes where he brought on Gavi, he brought on Pino, he brought on Pedri, he brought on Nico Williams. And then suddenly the Spain game was much more dynamic going forward. A similar epiphany like uh, that happened maybe to Mancini. And very, very late on. It is then a ball that far comes to Nico Williams, who uh, heads across an old guy, Morata, uh, puts it in, in, in the net, and Portugal are really, really um, punished for the very cautious uh, uh, approach, which is so, again, count counterintuitive. Like in England, this Portugal team needs to be let loose. There's so much offensive talent there that, yeah. Just gotta say it this way, uh, Port Portugal should perform much, much, much better. And Switzerland also got a quick 2 0 lead through Freula and Mbolo. However, Schick just before left pulled one back and then even had a penalty to equalize, and the Czechs had then a little bit more uh, off from that game in the end. So, uh, a little bit of a lucky win for Switzerland, but securing their spot, I mean, they would have needed to lose to the Czechs to not uh, stay in League A. Let's go to a League B where Finland secure their uh, status as a League B team with a 2 0 in Montenegro. Romania's 4 1 over already promoted Bosnia is not enough for them. Albania and Iceland again where it was an, uh, going nowhere. It's 1 1. Ireland had a crazy game against Armenia, two red cards for Armenia. I think they had a 2 0 lead, lead as well that they threw away. 
but the big ones are the last three here. The duel of the big strikers uh, between Norway and Serbia uh, went all service way. Norway had early chances, uh, but again, Norway is a very unbalanced squad for all the quality they have up front. Their defense is really, really, really bad. And if you have Vlaovic and Mitrovic, two uh, players in great form there, you always run into problems. Exactly those two who scored the goals and Serbia going up to League A, which seemed a little bit unlikely uh, not too long ago. Even more unlikely to me is uh, that Sweden would go down from this group. But they only managed a 1-1 at home to Slovenia where they needed to win. Wonderful goal by Benjamin Sheshko. Uh, basically a reverse from Boston. Just the same for Boston goal, uh, just on the other side. Really, really an amazing goal. Um, they put Sweden on the back foot, Forsberg before they have pulls on back, but uh, they just cannot uh, create enough chances and it's only 1-1 one, one, and that's a big blow for Sweden. A, a team that almost had qualified for the World Cup already threw that away in Georgia and now in the Nations League in, 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 in a group where they should have challenged for the top spot, they cannot manage more than fourth place. That's about as bad as I would say as was England's performance. And then Scotland will be the only uh, British team in League A next time, that time around, uh, securing a nil-nil against Ukraine in Krakow. And so um, it is them who win that group. Going over to League C, uh, the big shocker there was of course the Ferris 2-1 win over Turkey. Uh, yes, the ferry have beaten Austria at one, uh, at, at one point, but it seems like it, it didn't matter much. Turkey were already through, but losing 2-1 to the, on the ferry islands against a small team, against, against a big nation like, like Turkey, yeah, that doesn't bode well for the confidence of such a big nation. They say Bulgaria, I was so surprised that they get a 1-0 win in North Macedonia. Uh, securing a second spot there but that was a really positive break for Bulgaria for once and Greece also bounced back from the loss to Cyprus with a 3-1 over uh, Northern Ireland they also already moving up to League B which I think I think League B next next time around will be also quite interesting with many big teams in there and then the only uh, last thing decided in League D was will Moldova or Latvia go up Latvia get the 1-1 and Moldova only a 2-0 over Liechtenstein and that sees Latvia going up. As we can see here in the standings, Latvia just on goal difference and the head-to-head -head was also slightly, I think, by a goal in, in their favor. So that's why Latvia move up. Um, Estonia already had secured their spot up in uh, the League C. Um, League, uh, League Seed itself, we see here the standings. I mean, not much has changed except that Bulgaria overtook um, North Macedonia. But you see already for the relegation now I have the proper probabilities because we already know uh, the pairings. I'll show you in a sec. But it's clear that Gibraltar is also a favorite to get relegated. And I give you here the play down pairings. We have um, Lithuania play Bel Belarus and Gibraltar against Cyprus, but that's in early 24 which I don't understand. I think this should be played almost at the same time as the final four. You can arrange a draw accordingly, in my opinion. League B standings, we said Scotland had ahead of Ukraine. Ireland just escaped from Armenia. Uh, Israel is the surprise promoter team, but any team promoted out of that group would have been a surprise into League A. Bosnia win a rather, rather tight group. I think all of these teams are very much level, but Bosnia is probably just a tad above them. And then uh, probably the big, big name group is uh, won by Serbia ahead of Norway because Norway imploded late on and Sweden complete implosion. And if you look at the ratings column to the right, Sweden is actually the, um, I want to say the second best, if not the uh, second or third best team, third best team behind Ukraine and, and Serbia at this moment in, in this group. And they're going down to League C. But hey, jigs things up a little bit. And then we have finally uh, League A. We have Croatia winning it ahead of Denmark. Look at the, 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 the points total. This was an absolutely nuts group. If Austria would have beaten Croatia, uh, no, not only would Austria stay in, but that's not the point I want to make. Austria would have had then, um, you know, Croatia would have won the head to hands against Denmark and France, but lost to us or Austria. Then Denmark uh, would have lost to Croatia, but won against France and so on. France would have won a few. It, it, it was overall rather even. It's just that Austria just couldn't get, 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 get it done, and Croatia actually turned, turned it on in, in a while. Um, 
similarly crazy group between Spain and Portugal uh, and Switzerland, because Switzerland gave them, they started badly, but gave uh, them a run for the money. And the craziest, of course, was the third group where Hungary uh, completely surprisingly uh, were up in the running for first spot and only they only lost twice and that was both against it Italy. Italy only performed bad against uh, in, uh, against Ger uh, Germany where, where they had this big loss at home but it, rather uneven it's, you have to look at Germany you have to, you have to look at England rather uneven performances there and the Netherlands are really really impressive ahead of Belgium and Poland with Wales having the worst record in there. Um, who is not going to win the, uh, the Nations League? Given, and I think I hear that the Netherlands, the, anyone from this fourth group will host the final four, so I would think UEFA will give it to the Netherlands. And given that the home field advantage, Netherlands are the favorite because they would play home out of Spain, Italy and Croatia. Even if it was would we'll, we'll, we'll given to Belgium, I would still uh, think that the Netherlands would be then uh, have a sort of a home field advantage there. Uh, but we don't know the draw yet, so a lot can change. The remaining teams are arranged in the in the points and goal difference that they got. So yeah, Nations League is in the books. It also uh, largely informs now the draw for the Euro qualifying, and the draw is relatively soon as well, early October. So that will be exciting. Um, I may do a video on that one as well. Uh, basically, the pots are the Nations League standing and there's again some twists and turns here and there. Please let me know what you thought about the Nations League this time around. Which games do you, do you watch? Uh, where do you agree and disagree with me? Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, I'll give you one more unpacking video that you can see if you subscribe and regularly check out my channel before we go back into fully club mode. In any case, I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!